Hey guys, it's Kirsten. In this video, I will be digital sculpting uh, Doberman. I'm using Blender for this video, and you can find it. Just search Blender software. Here I, here I am opening it up. I just opened a sculpting file. You can actually access this from almost any of the file types, but sculpting is the best user interface for it. So right now, I'm actually just trying to find where it's reflecting. Oh, also, turning on dynamic topology is a really good idea. Essentially, what it does is allows the mesh to create its own vertices, which is really important. Otherwise, it'll be really low resolution the whole way through. So I'm just kind of getting some basic shapes, getting some ideas. At this point, I did not know what I wanted to model exactly. But I like to use the grab tool a lot. The problem with the grab tool is it ends up, it makes the mesh really messy, and then you have to go back and smooth it out. And sometimes it can cause more problems than it's worth. But here I'm just getting some reference images. You can add reference images. I, I just open up a new, uh, I, I segment my windows and add them in there. And then this is, so right now I'm using the grab tool and then smoothing it out. As you see, kind of going back and forth between those two. It's, it's a flow I like. Maybe not the best, but kind of boxing things out. And as you see, you have to continually rotate. Otherwise, you'll mess up the shapes. The neck was like really wide. It still is really wide. And that's because I was just grabbing it from, from one angle. It's really important to keep rotating around, looking at it from different angles. So another one I really like is the inflate tool. That's what I'm using right now. And... Essentially, it it's for just slightly. It's make it makes the mesh just a little bit bigger. It, it inflates it. That's what it's supposed to do. Also, you'll notice up at the top, some of the brushes have a plus and a minus up in the top next to the word strength. Some of them will have plus and minus, and that's you can make them additive brushes or subtractive. It's a really good thing. Smoothing it out again. It's the same process. And just keeping an eye on the pictures. See, my proportions were all off. They're still pretty, pretty far off right now. But um, sometimes you got to move forward or take your eyes off of it, too, just so that sometimes when you're working on it for too long, you don't notice what's wrong. You have to look back. Even now, after the fact, looking back on it, I notice mistakes I made, things I would change if I went back into the file. But... I really like putting my reference images actually on the screen because sometimes flipping back and forth between them makes it kind of difficult. Yeah, so it looks like I mostly just flip between a small handful of different brushes. There I was just looking at proportions. I didn't want to take the time to open up a whole new image in there, so I just needed to reference it really quick. So as I was saying, I generally just use a, a small handful of brushes. Blender brushes are not the best, to be perfectly honest, and from what I've heard, sometimes it's a good idea just to make your own brushes. I am fine with the brushes they have. I'm not extremely skilled, but I usually don't feel the need to get get new brushes, but I believe you can you can download some off the internet. Just look up uh, digital sculpting brushes, Blender extensions, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so here he is. Also, I started out wanting to make a mini Doberman, but he looks more like a Doberman, I think, just the way his jaws set and everything. Here he is.